in this video we can discuss about the electron microscope it's an important topic of pharmaceutical microbiology of third semester b from in previous video we had discussed about the introduction history terms used and light microscope so here we will discuss about the electron microscope especially transmission and scanning electron microscope now what is electron microscope electron microscope are the microscope in which we will use an electron beam with a far smaller wavelength instead of light and we are using this electron beam to gain a higher resolution in electron microscopy the beam is then focused by circular electromagnet instead of lens lens we will use in optical or light microscopy in electron microscopy instead of that lens we will use electromagnet and as the wavelength is decreasing the resolution will increase so shorter the wavelength of the electron will give greater resolution and coming to the resolution power of electron microscope it has a power 1 lakh times that of microscope and, and resolution power of electron microscope is approximately 0.05 nanometer that means 0.05 into 10 raised to minus 9 meter and there are two type of electron microscope that is transmission electron microscope and scanning electron microscope it have an resolution power of 0.05 for transmission and for scanning electron microscope it have an power of 20 nanometer now the main difference between transmission electron microscope and scanning electron microscope is the working principle of transmission electron microscope is very similar to the compound light microscope instead of light source we are using electron beams and instead of lens we are using magnetic lens and it have a resolution power of 0.05 nanometer and in uh, scanning electron microscopy we are using an electron beam which we will direct to a specimen and from that specimen there will be a secondary emission of electron that secondary beam of electron is detected by using different detector and it will make a 3d view of scanning electron microscope so that is the main difference between transmission electron microscope and scanning electron microscope now this is a, the construction of transmission electron microscope there is an electron drum usually it is a tungsten filament which is used as an source for electron from that a, a electron beam will be produced and this electron beam is focused by using electromagnetic condenser lens and it will focused on the specimen then uh, by electromagnetic uh, objective lens uh, we will use an electromagnetic objective lens to focus this beam uh, and electromagnetic projector lens and finally we will get an image on fluorescent screen or photographic plate that we can view we cannot uh, observe directly with our naked eye because we are using electron beam as uh, source for this electron microscope and one more thing this electron beam can be deflected uh, in air so we have to maintain all the structure all the uh, parts of electron microscope in an high vacuum so it should be closed so that is all about the construction we have an uh, heated tungsten filament and condenser and electromagnetic lens and we have we have to keep it in high vacuum now this is the similarity uh, between the light microscope and electron microscope here uh, it is a lamp here we will use a tungsten filament here it is condenser light but here it is condenser lens magnet here we will place the specimen here also specimen we have to place and objective lens instead of objective lens we have objective lens magnet and i piece lens instead of i piece lens we have a projector lens magnet and we can observe directly through by eye in light microscope but in electron microscope microscope we have to use a uh, image plate uh, for the uh, view of objects 
Now, what will be the observation of a transmission electron microscope? As the electron beam passes through the specimen, electron will be scattered. So what will happen? The denser region will appear darker because uh, there will be a fewer electron strike on the screen because uh, most of the electron will be absorbed by the darker region of the cell. So it will uh, observe it as darker and the lighter transparent region will appear as brighter. Here you can see brighter region is transparent region and darker region is a denser region. Now for the uh, observation of specimen in transmission electron microscopy we have to prepare a specimen because uh, electron are e easily absorbed and scattered by solid matter so we have to prepare a specimen with the thin slices uh, which can be observed by transmission electron microscopy and the specimen should be 20 to 100 nanometer thickness that means uh, one fifth of bacterial diameter uh, so it should be able to maintain the structure during the electron bombardment in presence of high vacuum so uh, for preparing that one we have four methods uh, method one method two method three method and four the first method is we have to fix the specimen with the glutaraldehyde head to stabilize the structure that is the first step then after that we have to dehydrate that one with the organic solvent then this specimen is soaked in unpolymerized ep liquid epoxy plastic the, uh, so that the specimen and the plastic harden to the solid block and the thin section from this hard solid block is cut by means of diamond knife, knife uh, with using an instrument called ultra microtone. The probability of electron scattering is determined mainly by the density of the specimen atom. So uh, biological membrane are primarily composed of uh, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. Therefore the electron scattering will be fairly constant throughout the cell if it is unstained. So in order to uh, uh, avoid this problem, uh, we will uh, add to improve the contrast, the various structures of thin section are stained by uh, soaking the uh, specimen in a heavy metal salt like lead citrate as well as uranium acetate. Then the stained thin section are then mounted on tiny copper grid for and support and viewed under the transmission electron microscope. So that is the first method for the specimen preparation. Now second method is also known as negative shading. So in this the specimen is spread out in a thin film with photo tungstenic acid or uranium acetate. So what will happen the heavy metal do not penetrate into the cell or specimen but it will render the background dark. So the specimen will, uh, will appear bright in photograph electron micro graph uh, the specimen will be in brighter and we can use this method of specimen preparation for the study of vi viruses bacterial uh, gas vacuoles so that is the second method uh, negative staining now coming to the third method it is also known as shadowing in this microorganism is coated with a thin film of platinum or any other heavy metal by evaporation at an angle of 45 degrees Celsius from the horizontal. This arrangement uh, allow the metal to stray the microorganism from only one side. The coated side scatter the electron and will appear light in microscope. The uncoated uh, side will appear dark and by using this method shadowing method we can study the different uh, uh, structures like virus morphology bacterial flagella and plasmid now uh, coming to the th fourth method that is freeze fracture and freeze etching in freeze fracture the cell are rapidly frozen in liquid nitrogen to minus 196 degrees celsius 
then this specimen is warmed to minus 100 degree celsius in vacuum chamber then by using a knife which is pre-cooled with nitrogen liquid nitrogen is used to fracture the frozen cell so while fracturing the fracture will occur at the line of weakness like plasma membrane and surface of organelles so that is the fourth method freeze fracture so uh, in fourth method there is another method known as freeze itching in this the specimen is left in the vacuum for a minute so that the little eye sublimate and uncover more structural features the exposed surface is shadowed and coated with a layer of platinum and carbon to form replica of the surface after the specimen is removed the uh, removed chemically the replica is studied with the transmission electron microscopy so by this we can provide a 3d view of intracellular uh, structures of specimen so these are the four methods which are used for the preparation of specimen the magnification power of electron microscopy is approximately 10,000 to 1 lakh and resolution is 2.5 nanometer now coming to the scanning electron microscope main difference between the transmission electron microscope is in scanning electron microscope we will produce an image from electron emitted by the object uh, surface rather than from transmitted electrons in electron uh, transmission electron microscope it was the transmitted electron were uh, used for the image production but in case of scanning electron microscope we are using uh, electrons emitted by the object now uh, for this we have to fix the specimen and dehydrate and dried then coated with a thin layer of metal to prevent buildup of electric charges on the surface for a better image uh, what are the advantages of scanning electron microscope when compared with the transmission electron microscope it is smaller and simpler uh, uh, and specimen preparation e is easy when compared with the transmission electron microscope and air dried specimen also can be studied now this is the construction of an scanning electron microscope we have an electron source we will focus this electron beam by using condenser lens and in between condenser lens there is a scanning coil and it will focus on the specimen which is uh, placed in the specimen holder so that uh, the primary uh, electron will uh, bombard with the specimen and it will emit and secondary electrons this secondary electron are detected by the photo multiplier tube and it is connected to the cathode ray tube for viewing as well as cathode ray tube for the photography so this is the construction of a scanning electron microscopy now by using scanning electron microscopy have a magnification power of thousand to ten thousand times and resolution power of 20 nanometer and we can produce a three-dimensional structure as shown below so like this we can use a three-dimensional images this is an another picture so this is all about microscopy uh, in this we had discussed about the introduction history terms used and different types of microscopy like electron microscopy and uh, light microscopes and these are the uh, important questions which are seen in the question paper electron microscope working and principle of electron microscope principles of electron microscopy and phase contrast microscope so give important for these topics and hope it is clear these are the reference used for the preparing this note so thank you for watching this video